Now there's a leak at the radiator hose and it looks like the clamp is rubbing on the belt and the clamp is rubbing through the hose. Daily driver Cherokee is starting to run hot. It's not overheating, but it normally stays around 200 degrees and burps and comes back down to 200. It's been running at 210 to 220. They do tend to run a little hot. This one never has, so I'm gonna test the system and see what's going on, because I kind of need it for this winter. And it's like 20 degrees and wind chill and snow. So let's get to it. But first I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use to test it, and then I'll do some other things along with that as well. I rented this radiator cap pressure test kit from O'Reilly's and while I was there I bought this old school cooling system tester so I could test the fluid. The first thing I'm going to do is check the fluid level, look in the radiator to see if I see anything funny floating around in it. And then I will use the hydrometer to actually check and see if the fluid is good for the weather. The car is cold, I'm not opening a hot radiator. No, it's low on fluid. That could be a Quick fix, that'd be nice, but likely not. That's really low on, okay. So step one is throwing fluid in it. I haven't noticed any major leaks and I've got no fluid on the ground. And I haven't seen any fluid leaking into the cabin from the heater core, that's a good indication. I haven't smelled pancakes, which is another great indication that the heater core is bad. So go ahead and throw some fluid in it, see where we're at. Let's see how I do with the Bluetooth funnel here. It would help if I had gotten the right coolant. I'll be back again. My TJ takes the Dex Cool the pink stuff, so that's what I grab by accident. My Bluetooth funnel skills leave a little bit to be desired. This stuff is straight, so I'm gonna grab a little water and throw it in there as well. Go ahead and throw the cap on it. And start it up, let it run for about five minutes, let it circulate through and see where we're at. It's only been about two minutes. I wanted the fluid to circulate. I'll pop the cap in a minute, see where the fluid's at, and then I'll start doing other testing. Once I get it running, I'm gonna go ahead and check and see the temperature difference between the upper and lower radiator hose, make sure the hoses aren't bad. Fluid just doesn't disappear, so there's gotta be a leak somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see where our coolant level's at. Better. Okay. Either got a bad one of these or it's been so long since I've used it, I can't remember how to. Yeah, I definitely need more fluid and I'll try this a little, little later. I'm likely gonna have to bleed the system out or burp it. So we're good to about negative 22. Oh, sorry, we're good to about negative seven. So I am in Fahrenheit land. I'm gonna go warm up for a few minutes and I'll come back out here and figure out where I'm going next. I might pressure test the cap. Might let it run first, let it warm up, circle through, get more fluid in it, see where we're at. Figure it out once I can feel my hands again. I'm gonna do the geyser test. An easy way to see if you have a bad head gasket is when you start the car, if coolant starts gushing out, you have a bad head gasket. Let's hope that's not what it is. Well, that's a good sign. I'm gonna let it get up the operating temperature and burp system, see where I'm at, check fluid again, check coolant level. And I'll pressure test after that. Unfortunately, my thermostat never opened, so I'm gonna have to replace this thermostat. There could be other issues. I'll end up pressure testing it once the vehicle's cooled down and I can again feel my fingers. But that's gonna be my first step at working on this. So it's not getting heat in the cab, it's not recirculating heat back through the system. But I hit the local auto zone and got some stuff I needed, like one of those nice big fill funnels. I've been wanting one of those for a while. Bigger drain pan, concentrated coolant. Thermostat, I got two of them that are fail safe style. I'm not sure what temperature I'm gonna put in yet. I'll decide that once I pull the old one out. And a gasket. So let's get going, cause it's not getting any warmer. Let me see if I can open up the radiator petcock drain to get at least some of the fluid down. I don't need to drain the whole system. I just wanna make sure it's lower than the thermostat housing. So there it goes. Okay, 
Unfortunately, it's stuck, so I won't be using the easy method. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do this. I'll figure it out in a minute. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the upper radiator hose and the heater core hose going to the thermostat housing. It's gonna be messy, that's why I got the big pan. The hose is brushed. Might regret not getting an upper radiator hose. We will see. It's too cold for this. I normally don't do stuff like this. When I work on a cooling system, I normally try to replace all the hoses, clamps, and everything else, but I'm on limited time, so I'm winging it. Hope this works. No hiccups. Yeah. Good lord, that was really complicated. Ooh, well, yeah, this thermostat really was uh, not working. Show it there. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of crappy. Pulling temp sensor. I'm gonna go see if I can get the feeling back in my hands and we'll pull the thermostat housing off. Well, I got some feeling back in my hands. Let's see if we can get this housing off. This is definitely much easier on a TJ, that's for sure. Hmm, that's crusty. Yeah, this housing is definitely very crusty. I'm gonna have to spend quite a little bit of time cleaning this thing off. What the housing looks like. I have to get a scraper, get the gasket off, and then I will see how that thermostat looks. Quick glow change, and we'll hopefully get this little guy off of here easily enough. That gasket actually came off in one piece. I've never had that happen before. Hopefully, that's a good sign. I'll go ahead and test the thermostat and see what the heck's going on. It is a 180. I'm glad I got both temperatures of the thermostat. I have a 180 and a 195. I prefer to run 180s. That's what I'll stick back in here. Go ahead and clean as much of this crap off of the thermostat housing as I can. I never do use these things and the big reason is because they just get gummed up over time and they're pretty darn cheap to replace but isn't really an option this time I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this out hit it up with brake clean get all the loose junk I can off of it and get ready to throw it back on throw some gasket cinch on it put the gasket on this side thermostat in oh I'm gonna clean the bolts first as well see if I can test this old thermostat Gotta get a little more heat in first. It does work, so I might have more problems than this. Well, pardon the smoke, but that's how the thermostat works. It actually comes out. I likely have more issues than just the thermostat, but it's this place to start, and it's where I'm starting. I won't be touching this with my bare hands anytime soon. I'm gonna spray some of this on the mating surface to the thermostat housing. It'll give me a chance to get everything in place with the gasket moving. Apparently I need a new can. I like to try to use the bolts to line the gasket up so that way I don't have to fight with it. Fight with it as little as humanly possible. Give that a minute or two to set up and we'll throw it back in the car. Snug this bottom bolt and then we will evenly torque them. We'll throw the hoses back on and bleed the system again and see where we're at. This might not fix it, but it should get us closer. I hate reusing this hose, but that's what I got right now. All right, let's wait for the ambulance and the random car. All right, let's throw some coolant in this thing and bleed it, see how it goes. I got this spill-free coolant funnel kit from AutoZone when I picked up the thermostat. It's made by many companies. I got this one from OEM. This is one of those tools I should have bought online because it would have been a lot cheaper from JD Tico, but I didn't. I had to get it now, so I paid for it. Did a little bit of trial and error, but I found the right adapter. 
Put it on just like a regular cap. Get it tight. Make sure it fits. Slap the big funnel onto it. Start filling. I'm gonna throw some coolant in it and then we will fire it up and let it bleed. Hopefully not all over the floor. Oh shit. Oh boy. It also comes with this handy little plug when you screw up and you don't tighten something down enough. Let's see how that does. Those thermostat housings are kind of fickle. Well, here's the hope I don't need a new gasket. As you can see with the fluid leaking, that's why I always put a new housing on. They always seem to leak afterwards. I should have done it this time. That's why it's dark now. I ran to the store, grabbed another one. So I'm gonna throw that on and I'll be back. New gasket, gasket sealer, new sealant on the thermostat sensor. I waited the hour to torque it. I waited an hour and a half and I'm gonna pressure test it a little bit and see where we're at and hopefully it's somewhere. The thermostat housing is perfect. Now there's a leak at the low radiator hose and it looks like the clamp is rubbing on the belt and the clamp is rubbing through the hose. So I will not be getting this done tonight. Fun times. Against my better judgment, I'm gonna try one more thing. I went ahead and got a lower radiator hose. I'm gonna go ahead and try to throw it on the Cherokee. This is probably stupid, but yeah, what else have I got to do? Oh, and it's snowing more again overnight. So the lower radiator hose is right below the fill neck. I'm gonna try to get that clamp, which is in a horrible position. It's too cold for me to show you much, so I'll pick it up when I have the hose off and I can pair them. Anyway, thankfully the hoses are the same. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the new hose on now once I can feel my fingers again. I had to take the air box out, but I've got the hose in, the clamps on. The other hose clamp is down there at the water neck for the water pump. So let's see what I can do. I'm gonna pressurize it and Actually, I'm probably gonna put a little fluid in first and then I'll pressurize it and see what happens. Well, here goes nothing. I'm gonna put a little tiny bit more in then I'll pressure test it. Should be enough fluid to see, at least at the bottom leaks. Well, that didn't work. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like the water pump's now leaking, which is what I assume. It, every time I run into this with the older vehicles like this, when you start fixing one thing in the cooling system, they're fixing everything. So this is likely gonna sit till we have an amazingly warm day in the near future or until spring. It's not going anywhere, it just needs maintenance. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching the nice big fat fail. See you next time. More Jeep content. More Jeep content, Rambler content, which you can't see, and Chambler content, which you can't see either. Whew. Take it easy. I got this fill-free spinal kit.